I'm going to do actually is have you guys stop on like an interactive session. So we're going to do several points where you guys are going to stop and discuss some things uh, rather than just leaving the last 15 minutes for questions. So we're going to go a little bit longer, uh, but I will stick around after if there's any questions that you guys want to talk about. I uh, welcome those questions as well. So my background, my name is John O'Coyle. I am uh, the creator of Auspicious Agile. I was a founder of the uh, Rally Services business in Asia, uh, also in the U.S. practice and services. I've done about two decades in technology roles, including uh, major uh, work that I did uh, with Disney. We launched in the Walt Disney World uh, in Park Experience, which was done with about 500 plus uh, developers in Agile across uh, three continents and time zones. I'm um, uh, Safe Agile is an SPC, uh, certified Scrum Master, product owner, CSP, and in the process of pursuing CST certification. Uh, I went undergraduate to UC Irvine in California as a computer science major. I do have an MBA, so I'm guilty of that. Uh, from UCLA, and I also hold a law degree from uh, Southwestern Law School. As you can see, I played a lot of roles throughout my career, uh, whether it be as an executive, an entrepreneur, as a director, or as a developer. Uh, so a lot of roles, and hopefully we'll bring some of that background to you as we go into our Agile scaling tour today. So I'm going to give the disclaimers here. I, as I mentioned, I'm an SPC, which is a safe program consultant, so guilty of that. Uh, I don't necessarily subscribe to only just doing one thing. You'll see what I mean in the Shu Hawi video in a moment. But I think that there's some very good content you get out of that. Uh, and I do so these classes for SPC, for classes uh, for SAFE, as well as uh, that. Also, I want to give uh, credit where it's due, agilescaling.org. A lot of the content came from practitioners at that site and many of my former colleagues uh, that I also stand on the shoulders of a lot of the work that they've done uh, as I go into the content in this presentation today. With that said, uh, what I am not a process evangelist, so I'm not focused on one method, one approach. This is the only way that you do it. I'm much more practice based. Not a cycle of only one method, but I think it's very important that, that you have a good foundation in how you follow these different approaches. But there is also flexibility in how you pursue them. What I am is an appreciator of good ideas. So whether the good ideas come from SAFE, whether they come from Spotify, whether they come from LESS or other Agile Salem or Scrum or Scrums or Practice or other areas, I like to see all those good ideas. Lean Startup, whatever it is. We had some great talks at the uh, Global Shanghai Scrum Gathering recently. Uh, Joe Justice talked about uh, Scrum at Manufacturing, which is a great topic. There's a lot of ideas that come in together, and we want to really see all of those in our practice rather than just adhering to one thing and saying, this is it, this is the only thing that I do. So I believe in Shu Hawi. I will not read this slide to you because you're going to get one of my auspicious Agile video blogs in a moment that's going to explain exactly what that means. Uh, and uh, it's a very important principle, I believe, in how you actually scale and apply scaling principles. The agenda we're going to go into is we're going to safe less and dead, what I like about them, what others have to say about them, including Agile Scaling, .org and many practitioners there. We'll talk about other notable, notable scaling approaches, so Scrum, Scrum, Spotify, Nexus, and there are many more, but these are the ones I've chosen because they're really the, the hot topics in the last few months that I've been putting together this series. You'll also find the series uh, that I'm talking about. There's a series of five blog posts on Auspicious Agile uh, that go through all the content that I'm going to cover here, and I did them in preparation for this series. And then going forward at scale. How do you go forward and proceed at scale? And we'll do the QA, which again will probably be at the end after our interactive sessions. Okay? So let's see if we can get the uh, video to play, and hopefully it's not too loud. I did a little sound check beforehand. Hi, this is John Cora. Welcome to this week's auspicious Agile video blog post. This week we're going to talk about Agile and martial arts, Shu Ha and Me. Now, a couple of questions may come to mind for you immediately. One, what does Agile have to do with martial arts? And two, what is Shu Ha Ri? So we're going to try to have a little fun with this and take a look at how these are related in this week's blog. So first, let's start with uh, those who are familiar with Aikido or maybe another martial art. You may know the Shu Ma Ri approach to training. Martin Fowler explains the connection to Agile in an article uh, that's uh, by the on the topic. And Alistair Cockburn introduced it as a way of thinking about software methods. Now, let's look at Shu first. So Shu is a kanji character for Shu. And in Shu, it can be is a beginning where the learner learns a rule and follows it without varying it in any way. This can be likened to someone learning Scrum or Kanban or say or less, etc. for the first time. This would not be the time to try to vary an experiment with new 
approaches, but rather to learn the fundamentals of the approach. Learn the rule without variation. The next shades that we have after shu is the ha. Now in ha, this is where the martial arts learner begins to break the basic rule. Experimenting with the improvements and the variations in their practice as a martial art. In Agile, this may be, for example, where in the Telstra case study, this is one from the Scaled Agile Framework website. Uh, this is Telstra is an Australian uh, provider of uh, mobile and uh, telecom. And they use Scaled Agile Framework, but they didn't use the PI planning, which is a program increment planning. So that happens every 10 to 12 weeks, but they did not use it in their case using an early version of SAFE. Or this is a scrum team that starts using backlog really as a regular ceremony, even though it's not the finest one uh, in scrum. The point here is to try some level of variation on the rule and see what works. Next, we come to read. This is where the learner becomes the last master, becomes the rule. They actually become the rule like Bruce Lee, who created his own martial art form. In Agile, this would be when a very experienced practitioner actually finds their own approach based on what has come before. So, examples of this would be the Agile scaling area is a very good example, where you have Dean Leffingwell with a scaled Agile framework and his practice that became a group of components in the core map, Scott Ambler with discipline Agile delivery, or with Marmon involved with the less or large scale scrum. At this point, the practitioner becomes the rule. They're learning from their own practice. They're not just learning from the rule that they had learned before. Now, that said, I'd like to make a few notes on this. First, I think in many cases, there's a human tendency is to assume that we are more advanced than we actually are. Thinking maybe that we're in re instead of that we're actually in ha or that we're in ha, we're actually in shu. And this would mean trying to become the rule for re when in reality we should be experimenting because we're in ha with the existing rule, always learning that approach of Kaizen is how continuous improvement from lean. So we're always trying to learn, and we should maybe be in that space rather than trying to become the rule because we're not quite ready for that. Uh, this could take the form of a newly minted scrum master who's done one project, now assuming that they will redefine the entire approach to agility for an entire enterprise. Now, I would say kudos on the confidence of this new scrum master, but probably not a realistic goal based on the skills and experience. As many of you know, it really takes working with many scrum teams just to start understanding team level scrum. An enterprise is something that is far more complex than that. So, a lot to learn from martial arts as we look at Agile and Shuhari. I hope this gives you a uh, interesting look at the connection between the two. Uh, I will try to include in the links uh, the article by Martin Fowler on the topic as well. And uh, please uh, do subscribe. Uh, you can do so on YouTube if you're interested in getting updates to the most recent auspicious Agile video blogs. So until next time, stay Agile and thanks for listening. So, on that last point, the shoe hardware, this is really the approach that I take in learning. Uh, a lot of times you'll see somebody will come out to a project and they'll say, or an initiative or a value stream, whatever you want to call it, and they'll say, you know what, you don't have this and this and this, and therefore you're not doing Agile. And it's most likely because of their phase of learning, really they've learned the shoe, which is just I've learned the basics. And certainly for me, I'm still learning. I'm by no means a master, and most of us are in a phase of learning. So that's the idea here, is that you want to keep learning from others' practice rather than assuming that, you know, we kind of achieved, you know, mastery long before we actually may have done so. Now, let's take a look at some introductions to safe dad and less. So I want you to start, as I mentioned, we're going to have learning activity. Take about three or four minutes here. I want you to just talk to a few people next to you. What are some of the scaling methods you've had experience with? And was it successful? Was it not successful? We'll come back together in a couple of minutes, and we'll talk about with a couple of you what uh, 
what you thought were. So let's uh, take a few minutes now, get to know somebody next to you.